Good morning. You're on the air. Good morning. Hey, this is Roy McGraw, the training director of the Local 198 Appreciative School. Well, good morning, Roy. Glad uh, glad you called in. Uh, you you must have heard me stumbling here on the radio. We were waiting on another guest to call in. I'm glad you called in. Uh, we have been pushing the importance or, or what we're going to do as far as having a drive coming up is, uh, with, with our training school. Uh, can you tell people on if they want to uh, become a member of Local 198 Apprenticeship School, uh, you know, what, what we can do to do this? Yes. Well, the requirements are you have to have a high school diploma or, or a GED, and you have to have a Social Security card, a current driver's license, and and your birth certificate, and then you just if you just come up here and pick up an application. I'll explain the whole process to everyone. We have a, it's a five year program. You go to school six nights a month for for five years, but it's three hours a night, and you work for one of our contractors during the daytime, so you can earn while you learn. You can make a living while you get this great education. Now, Roy, if a uh, if a young man or woman uh, has a some experience, but just doesn't have, I mean, they they've been working out there for a couple of years doing doing part of this trade. Uh, you know, they might not go the full five years; they'll get credit for for that, right? Oh, absolutely, that's correct. Uh, we will look at their paperwork, you know, their experience they have, and place them accordingly. You know, if they have two years experience, or, you know, then they will go to school for three years. And we we've been talking for the last few months about doing another eighteen week accelerated welding program. Uh, let's let's walk through that a little bit on uh, what what's going to be involved or or how if they're interested in doing that, uh, how we can go about uh, maybe enrolling in that also. Well, the first thing is you just call up here to the school at 355-9938, and, and I'll put your name on the list. And whenever the class actually starts, you know, you'll get a phone call. And it's 18 weeks, but you can, but, it, but it's, uh, I'm, I'm stumbling through the word here now. I got, I got your stumbles. Well, it's going to be an 18-week. Progress uh, yeah. oriented. You know, when you, you get, you, to, you know, get. You get out of it what you put in it. Get them done, complete them, you know, learn the task, pass the test. And, you know, it's like four things. You have to do a stick well test and a, and a heliox test and cut with a tart and then a little bit of socket well. And if you can finish it in six weeks, you're finished. You don't have to necessarily do the entire 18 weeks. That's just the, the amount of time we a lot for so you can bring in a little uh, welding experience and excel uh, uh, or go you, through the program quicker than the 18 weeks if you do have uh, some experience or if you have the drive to get in that welding booth and weld for eight hours a day. Uh, we need to really uh, stress to the, uh, to the individuals that might be interested in it, this is a 40-hour-a-week class. Yes, it is. 40 hours a week, be five days a week, eight hours a day. And uh, like I say, you know, it's it's, it's go at your own pace. When you finish these four tests successfully, then you're, you're complete. And, Roy, isn't it amazing? I mean, you and I uh, have talked about this time and time again. Every time you open up the newspaper, uh, you know, the, the, the craft that is needed, it's going to be pipe welders. Uh, you know that that's what that's what's on the on the front page of the newspaper all the time. Pipe welders, and here we're fixing to offer a class uh, for free, uh, for free, for free uh, that is going to be teaching pipe welders. Uh, you know, teaching somebody a, a craft to uh, to get out there and earn a, earn a respectable living. You can learn to earn a great living. Yeah. And there's no reason in the world anyone, unless they have some sort of eye-hand disability, yeah. you know, coordination between the eyes and their hands, there's no reason anybody can learn this in 18 weeks. Well, and Roy, we should, also, uh, we should also tell the, the listeners that it's not just, they're not going to just go out there, they're not going to just come to your, your school and learn how to weld pipe. Uh, you're going to take it a step further, uh, 
and when the school starts, they're going to be enrolled in school, and you're going to teach them how. Uh, you know, you're going to teach them the piping trades also. Absolutely, all of our apprentices, the best welders we have, must pass a piper test to get out of the school because you're going to be a classman when when you turn you loose. So we're not just we're not just going to teach them a task. We're going to teach them a craft. They they will have blueprint drawing and reading. And, and advanced piping, and depends on where they are, then they start with basic piping to go along with the welding. Okay. Uh, well, while I got you on the phone, why don't you uh, tell us a little bit else about your school as far as uh, what if I don't want to be a welder? Uh, you want to be a welder? The first thing is to come fill out an application, you know, if, uh, if you don't want to do the 18 week class. No, I'm talking about what if I don't want to go into the welding field? Uh, you also have plumbing and HVAC, don't you? That's right. We have plumbing and HVAC, and uh, you, you, you will get, at the end of your time, you can get your uh, state plumbing license. As a matter of fact, we stress that. If you're going to be a plumbing apprentice, you, you, you will have your state license when you get out of here. As long as you apply yourself, it's up to you. It's there for you. All you have to do is take it. But then you also can be a. You can get out of here in five years if a young man or lady would apply themselves. They can get out of here with a state plumbing license and welding certification and a pipe fitter. You can have it all, and then you will never be looking for a job because one or the other of those crafts are always looking for somebody. Well, I might tell you another craft that I think it's a hidden craft that that we do teach and are, are and that is the HVAC uh, that's a pretty good living there also Roy oh absolutely there's there's a few contractors that you know and, and they like to hire someone to keep them for life and we just bought the latest equipment uh, just last week as a matter of fact it came in okay we'll and trained up to date and I have a. Uh, I, I told the listeners earlier that uh, they can call that that three five five nine nine three eight, and that is for the Baton Rouge area. But you also uh, you also oversee the uh, Lake Charles area. So if if they have a young man or woman that that would like to join up, but they want to. Uh, be in the Lake Charles area with all the, you know, the, there's a lot of work coming in that area. You can also accommodate them with that too, can't you? Absolutely. Lake Charles, the way I understand it, has more work on the books than any city in the United States. It's going to be just, uh, I mean, a, a wild boom going over there. I mean, we, we're just right in the process of getting our new school opened over there, and it is a state of the art. I mean, it's, it's a show place. It, it, it's one it, of the finest schools in the South. Yep, I, I think uh, I think it, it is the finest school in the South. Well, I haven't seen them all, so I can't really judge, but that's from what I'm hearing. And then I have seen this place, and it is absolutely amazing. Well, we it's have 50, 52 welding booths. Yep. It's an enormous school. Not just the 52 welding booths. We also have uh, uh, the classrooms, and we have the labs for the HVAC, Which, for yeah. the plumbing. And uh, the plumbing, correct. Uh you know, we've got the rigging tower set up, uh, you know, where we can teach the, uh, uh, or not teach, we're, we're going to certify. Certify people in, in rigging, flagging, correct. All right, and, that, and then that's another, uh, that's another thing that we need to discuss on, on here with you and I and to, for the listeners. Once we get through with our apprenticeship, you and I went through the apprenticeship. So once we get through with the apprenticeship, uh, with today's technology and, and the different things that have happened on, on the jobs and, and, you know, they don't, uh, the plants are really frown on OSHA recordables and they, they figure out ways to keep people from getting hurt or killed on, on a job site. So we have to continue our education as journeymen once we turn out. And uh, and this is one thing that's coming up right now is the 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 rigging and flagging on on, on these different jobs as far as being able to make lifts with uh, the rigs with our piping and stuff. Uh, correct? Oh, that's correct. Our journeyman. This school comes to the membership of the local, so any journeyman can come back here and learn to weld. Or we have journeymen that go through the HVAC program after they get out of the friendship. Some come back and do their plumbing, 
As a matter of fact, this morning, I'm, I'm at school this morning. We're doing a, uh, a gentleman medical gas test up here this morning. So the what does the medical gas consist of? I mean, that, well, it, that's for your hospitals it, and stuff, correct? Right, in hospitals and dentist's office, and, and it's all the, uh, every time they put a mask over your face, you know, there's gas going through it, whether it be the anesthesia or, or the oxygen or what have you. And, and there's a special state license, and there's also a federal NICC license that you get. And, and that, that's required to run medical gas in any of these facilities. And the importance of being licensed for that would be? The importance, well, first off, a lot of jobs, well, you can't, you can't do it legally without the license. And way back when this started, it was because they closed the hospital down in California. And, and then they opened it back up. And, you know, this was before there was a medical gas license. And the first nine people that were operating on that hospital died from bacteria in the medical gas line. So that's what got it all kicked off years ago. That's how important it is. I mean, the first nine died from bacteria in the medical gas line. And that's where we were talking earlier about the, the plants that have, uh, you know, uh, people getting hurt or killed on, on jobs with the rigging. Uh, we also have uh, a backflow prevention class that you you put on too, uh, and and you have to uh, you have to recertify. What what is that? Every three years on that. Every also? three years you have to do a continuing education on the backflow and the medical gas. Now the plumber plumbing license you have to go to a four hour continuing education class every year for that. Okay, and we we offer that continuing education just so the listeners know. Uh, we offer that continuing education at our facility, and that's not just for uh, union. I mean, this uh, this isn't a union versus non-union thing. Uh, when we all uh, we, we're concerned about the communities, and and we want these people to participate. So it's not just uh, union people that are uh, offer that that continuing education, is it? No, the continuing education is open to anyone. Hey, a lot of people don't realize plumbing, the plumbing, the plumbing board is under the purview of the health and hospital. That's who sets the law and enforces them for the plumbing board. Plumbing is a safety, health and safety issue. It's, you know, it's not as much craft, but that's what they're about, is just protecting the safety of the public. And then without backflow, Lord knows what, it go back in, to the you have a problem in your building, then whatever kind of contaminants you have to go right back into the city water line. Well, Roy, I've had the, I've had the privilege of working with you, uh, not just up at the front office, just uh, out in, out in the out in the field too, and your uh, your dedication to the local is second to none. I, I do appreciate your your loyalty and dedication to the local. But you you went from uh, you know being up at the front and and when I say up at the front at the union hall dispatching and and helping out with that back to the school uh, that is uh, have you seen like an uptick as far as people coming in wanting to apply wanting to uh, you know join and in a different what word am I, a different attitude towards the people that are coming in that their eyes are opening up and realizing that they can have a, a, a great career with our, with our training? Some of them, yeah. It comes in spurts. You know, there, there'll be one week, there'll be a lot coming in, and they've heard about it. And, you know, when they sit down and talk to me and I explain our insurance and pension and the education they're going to get here and the opportunities, and what a lot of them don't realize is this is not just school. You know, we're going to take care of them for the rest of their life. Well, I and mean, I think you just you just hit something that I've I've really forgot about, and and, and that's something that we do need to uh, you know talk about uh, insurance, pension, annuity, uh, education. Uh, we offer all that. So once you become a, a member and a journeyman, a lot of people don't realize that that the education doesn't stop there. I mean, we continue to do uh, continuing education. There's new welding techniques, and we're always uh, 
you know, getting state of the art equipment and, and trying to stay ahead of the curve when it comes to all the new welding techniques uh, that are back at our school because uh, you have one of the nicest welding shops uh, in the South also. Yeah, we're really proud of our welding shop. We, we, can, we could conceivably test 32 welders at one time. And, uh, and we have our own testing uh, 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 criteria too, don't we? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, the, the UA has, I think it's 44 or 46 different well tests. You know that you, you know whatever whatever your job requires. There's a there's a UA well test to cover that. And when we, when we talk about the UA, what we're talking about is our international. Our international spends, and correct me if I'm wrong, Roy. Our international uh, spend we 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 spend. It's not our international. It's us. Uh, but our international spends over two hundred and forty million dollars on training on education. Every year, right, and that's, that's a lot it. of money. That's a lot of money. We have our Over own billion dollars every we, year on training. We make our own books. We have our own curriculum. Uh, you know, there's there's no uh, no third party coming in doing all that for us, or no the federal government or anybody else. This is this is all uh, from the members' money, really. Uh, the members, Absolutely. every nickel of it comes from the members. Every every nickel of it comes from the members, and and so one thing we do believe in is training, training, training. Uh, who else in the world takes money out of their check every every hour they work to train their replacements? Yes, that's nobody it. does that. And but, uh, and and that's another thing that that we uh, we also pride ourselves on. We we not only have the night school, we also have a school during the day. And that's when you get placed with a journeyman out in the field, and and they train you also out there in the field. Yeah, you will learn, you know, as well as I do. You you will learn more about at school how to do things. You go on the job, they teach you what to do, and you know, you come back to class and say, "Hey, we were doing such and such today. I didn't really understand it." And when I was teaching basic piping, a lot of times that was our lesson for the night. I'd say, okay, who did something today they didn't understand? Right. Somebody say, well, we did such and such, and I really don't. I don't know what they did. So that that would be our lesson for the day, and that just pulls it right back into the real world. You well, know, just and, and I'm gonna tell you, uh, you know, Roy. Uh, I know I'm a pain in your side sometimes, but I. Uh, I've been coming uh, back to the school for a long time, and and I'm a, uh, here in the past few months. I've been uh, popping in unannounced, and uh, I, I'm very pleased with what I see going on back there. I see uh, I see the young men and women, not just the young men and women. Uh, your instructors, uh, you know, y'all doing a lot of practical stuff, not just the book work. You're doing a lot of practical stuff. Uh, not just in the welding shop, but in the pipe fitting shop, in the plumbing shop. Uh, you know, I pulled up there the other night. Uh, you know, you had the uh, the box out there, and y'all were doing a plumbing module. Uh, uh, and I'm assuming that that was, uh, you know, like, uh, is it, well, I'm not assuming. I know it, it's the training for you're going to pour a slab, and, and the inspector's coming, and, and you know, you, you have to, know the art on on digging the trench uh to set your pipe in so the dirt doesn't cave in on it and and uh you know it, it's it's amazing the little tricks of the trade that we also teach them back there but it, again i i enjoy coming up there uh i don't know if you enjoy me coming unannounced but i enjoy bother coming, me uh, i know it you does. have nothing to hide from anybody anybody's welcome here anytime but i mean it's uh i uh, again it, it it's uh it's a warm, fuzzy field, and when I walk in a classroom and I see uh, 12 young men and women, uh, we, we were laughing the other day because, uh, what was it, uh, Jonathan Waddell uh, was teaching the advanced piping, and they were back there, and uh, you and I both made the comment because he, he wanted to tell them that they had uh, messed up. Right. It's it, hard to watch them make a mistake <laughs> the mouth closed. That's how they learn. Uh, but yeah, yeah but, you have to sit there and watch them knowing the pipe was wrong. Yeah, have it all up, pick it up, put it in the hangers, bolt it to the little vessel we have back there, knowing it's not going to fit. Yeah, but if you you have to just bite your tongue and let them make the mistakes 
better to make the mistake here in class because that's how you learn than to make it on the job and look like a fool. Yeah, and, and like I said, and the same thing out there. And the, uh, uh, you you have a uh, uh, what's Joe uh, Moranto? Joe Moranto. Uh, Joe Moranto is uh, I, he's an up and coming star. He he is very. Uh, well, he's not only young; he's very knowledgeable on on the plumbing, and I, I'm I'm glad you got him back there instructing with your uh, with your plumbing. But uh, to see him out there in that box was uh, uh, very satisfying, also. Joe is, is incredibly wise beyond his years. I mean, he is so mature for I mean, Joe's like 29 years old. Oh, and is he? You, you, you sit and talk to him or watch him in action with his class. You'd swear he's 45. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and, and like I said, uh, when I when I pulled up, uh, he was in he was in that sand pit uh, or dirt pit. Uh, he was just as dirty as everybody else. He was in there with them, uh, and it was uh, like I said, it was a pleasure to pull up and see that. Uh, you know, let, that, that let going me on. explain this, this dirt pit. The listeners might not realize exactly what we're talking about. They haven't seen it. We have a big box built full of dirt, and it is a mini poem. And he will have give the apprentices a set of prints, and they would dig the ditches, pop the springs, and completely put all the plumbing that goes under your slab in this little mini house. And and, and that's what that's about. And, and and the little mini house, and and, and I'm glad you brought that up. The little, uh, what they're doing is it's a mock up. And yeah. and it's uh you know the code says that the uh and and it, here here we go back uh we can go back to Donnie and Richard's class with the math part uh the math and the basic piping part uh you know so you go through a progression as you go through the school uh but the code says that the lavatory or the uh, or the uh, fixtures have to be a certain measurement away from the wall. So you have to come from the edge of your concrete. Uh, you have to allow for your wall thickness. Uh, and I'm talking about everything. You're, you're not only your studs, your sheetrock, everything. And when you stub up, uh, you got to realize that if you're off an inch or two, uh, your toilet you're might not be in the right place. The wall. That's it. Instead of, you know, where you want the tub set. Yeah. And, and, you don't have room, you know, you just won't connect. Yeah. And and you've got like on on your tubs and showers, there's there's a hole that you know everybody's seen a tub and a shower. There's a you don't really think about what's underneath it. Oh, there's a lot underneath it. And it has to be it has to be correct. And not just underneath it. Then uh, once once it's all stubbed up, uh, let's move forward. What what Joe's gonna be doing next? Once it's stubbed up, and let's say the uh, we're not gonna pour concrete, but we've got another module inside. Uh, where the stuff you don't see behind the walls. Uh, you you have a uh, facility back there, one that represents a home and one represents the commercial end of it. Yeah, he has lots of different prints that you use in the same sandbox. Uh, and uh, uh, Roy, you know Greg Gosney. Uh, he's he's over our, uh, with our pension and health and welfare. Uh, met him a few times. Yes, yeah, you met him before once or twice. Uh, we got a new listener, Greg Gosney. I'm gonna give him a little shout out. Uh, morning, hey, Greg. Greg. Morning, Greg. Glad to have you on. Uh, and I'm uh, looking forward to uh, him tuning in more often. And maybe we'll get Greg to call in one day uh, yeah, or one morning. Nice. So that's a whole other facet of, of this organization. Yeah, and. Uh, but okay, now we we move inside. Uh, we're inside, and we have the uh, you have your mock-ups with the residential, and you have the mock-up with the commercial end of it. And you before before you do that, uh, you've got another mock-up to teach them how to solder and, and sweat copper and all that, don't you? Well, as a matter of fact, we're doing that this morning with this medical gas class. Yeah, they they will all learn how to solder. And silver solder and, and, and sweat pipe, the other okay. copper pipe. And, and they, they use be... the thread pipe, cut and prep, welded pipe, and weld it. And there is, and, and you also teach them because there's different materials for different 
aspects of the uh, of the plumbing as far as your water, your uh, your gas lines, your uh, plumbing. Uh, you know, uh, all that is is factored in, and 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 that's what we teach. You know, and, yeah, it's and, all spelled out in the plumbing code. And just for our listeners, the plumbing code—it's a big, thick book, uh, and it's uh, kind about of about two and a half inches thick. Yeah, and it's kind of confusing. Uh, but you, you, once you get through with the school, you can pretty much you, you know how to because we also teach the the book itself. Uh, we do have a lot of we're talking about doing the uh, modules and stuff, but you. Uh, I know Joe, when I came in there a few weeks ago, he was going over uh, the plumbing code book also. Yeah, Joe goes over it a little bit, but in it, the Tom Vince what teaches advanced plumbing, and, and that's a big portion of the advanced plumbing is to uh, teach him how to read that book. Well, Tommy Vince, he's a, uh, he's a newbie, huh? Yes, yeah, well, he's a newbie. You just brought but him he's on? one of the most knowledgeable plumbers in the area. Yeah, uh, Tommy is not only a, a plumber, but he's also a master plumber, uh, and, uh, you know, glad to have him on board, too. Uh, you've also got another guy that uh, helps you out a lot that I, I do know, uh, and that's Richard Wilson. Richard uh, Wilson, as a matter of fact, he's standing right here. He's standing right there? He's standing right here, yes. He's, uh, he's in, teaches the uh, medical gas class. We, we're having an exam this morning. Okay. Well, like I said, I know you've got uh, Richard. Richard taught back there for what? Uh, well, he's still uh, teaching back there, but he it, taught in the classroom for 26 years? I don't know, 50 or 60 years, forever. 20-something years, sure. I think it was 26 years. He said 1989 he started. Well, that's that's quite a few years, and, and we do appreciate him. Uh but again, when uh, so the progression is when the when the kids first and I say kids when the young men and women uh, join up, uh, depending on their their skill set, you do give a uh, it's not a uh, you give a placement test. Well, it's an aptitude test. Yes. Yeah, and uh, and that's where uh, to place them. And if they're a little uh, behind or a little slow with their math skills, you put them in the. Uh, the pipe, uh, but everybody goes through basic piping. Everybody but, goes through basic piping, so it, it, it lets us ensure that they have the math skills to and, progress. And what? Uh, and the reason we do that is because there's no aspect of our trade that you don't need the math. Uh, well, if, if you can't add and subtract, multiply and divide, you can't build a birdhouse. Yeah, and we were going. We go back to just with the plumbing part of it. Uh, you know have, how you have to be pretty accurate uh, when it comes to the drains and the water lines and everything else uh, coming through the stub ups through the concrete and also the walls and uh, you got to be accurate as far as cutting your pipe and uh, you know all that. Yeah, uh, taking your measurements and, and it's the same with pipe fitting. So when they get through with their basic math class, then you take them and. Uh, either on their application, or I, I know you do this, uh, they might have, they want to be a welder, but once they get in there and they see what's going on, they might want to go into the HVAC. signing sheet, say what class do you request. I can't promise you that you'll get that class because some years everybody wants to go into welding. You know, we just don't have room. But I accommodate them best they can. And Roy, you have uh, you have the capability of have, having how many welders in, in the welding shop? 32. So 32. And you have, really you have two different class. You have a Tuesday night and a Wednesday night class. Right, that's our basic, we have a basic welding class and an advanced welding class. Okay, so you have the same thing as you have with, with every other class. You have a basic class with the HVAC and an advanced class with the HVAC? Correct, and the same with plumbing and pipe fitting. And then uh, we need to uh, also talk about uh, our drafting class. 
uh, we've got Lane Ballot doing your uh, your drafting class. So, uh, what do they get out of the drafting class? That would be yeah. planners and schedulers and yes, uh, and, and, and sketchers. You know, a lot of people have to go in and just you know take the big blueprints and make little smaller ones, and they have to be able to scale off of it and get those measurements right. And they also learn how to draw the drawings because every pipe to the you go take measurements, you have to make a drawing. And sometimes you may know what it means, but if you don't do it correctly and you get pulled off or away from that job and someone else comes, if your drawing's not proper, then the next guy that falls behind you has to start over because he doesn't understand your shorthand or your whatever kind of you know homemade drawing you have. So you need to draw, make the drawing correctly in case someone falls behind you and takes over that job, he'll look at it, and it's, it may not be as pretty as a, you know, one that came from an engineering firm, but it's just as accurate. Well, and we, we have people that have gone on uh, particular jobs as a pipe fitter or a welder, and they get out there, and and they move, uh, and I say move up, they might move to, to be a planner and a scheduler. Uh, oh, absolutely. Uh, and, and I want sitting right across the desk from them. Yeah, and and part of that is uh, uh, pre turnaround work, or, or when they're going to have a shutdown of a plant, uh, they would literally go out there and you know they take the the prints and they go out there and see what what changes need to be made, and they come in there and and they uh, they plan and schedule it. Uh, they they and order the ISOs, material, which is one of the most important things because you get ready to do the job if you don't have the proper material sitting there waiting for you, well, now you have to just shut the job down and wait for it to be ordered. Well, and they also have, have the responsibility of saying it's going to take X amount of hours to do that so they can schedule something, you know, uh, you know, because it's a domino effect. Once you get through right. with this project, you you need to move on to this, and, and you know, there's there's procedures on, on priority, what needs to get finished, and, and it can... Uh, and when you say you're going to have a 12-day uh, shutdown, you know, you have to plan it and schedule it, and then you figure out your man hours with that, and that tells you how many people you have to have on the job. So, I mean, it's a very important job, and we teach that back there. Uh, Absolutely. You know, uh, and... And how to get a job. And then on your welders, we're going to throw a little shout-out with those two. Who do you have teaching your uh, basic welding? I have a... Uh, Robert Miller teaches our basic piping. I think you know him. Yeah, I, I've met him once or twice. And yeah. then the advanced uh, welding? It's Gary Adams, and he is extremely, both of them are. Gary knows more about the technical aspect of welding than, than most anybody I've ever been around. Sometimes he amazes me when he starts talking about the different wavelengths of the electricity if you set it this way and that way, and I'm one. Uh, okay. <laughs> if you say so, and, I believe uh, you. Have I missed anybody? I, I did. I did miss one person, and uh, that's we didn't mention that, Ronnie's name. He's our HVAC. Yes, Ronnie Bashir, yes, which is uh, our HVAC, and he's been doing it. For Ronnie Bashir, and uh, he's been doing that for years. He has set up a, a and, and and we talked. We talked. Uh, pretty extensively about our welding shop, but there is really uh, your HVAC uh, with your training modules and stuff that you have there. Uh, we also have, uh, we've got new training modules uh, with the plumbing and the HVAC uh, uh, tubing uh, as far as uh, instrumentation. Uh, you're going to be at uh, with the electoral school and the school here in the Baton Rouge, you're going to be able to transfer modules, training modules from one school to the other? Yeah, this is interchangeable. This, you know, two buildings with one school. Uh, and because we have we have apprentices that went to work over in the Lake Charles area where they just make a phone call and the next, that week they go to school in Lake Charles. And when they finish that job, they come back here and come come to this school. Okay, so so we're uh, and and we're going to interchange. That, I forgot about that. Uh, mm -hmm. If if we have a, a job in Lake Charles, they will go. Uh, you know, they're close right there. They'll go to that school. They'll just follow into a class there. 
uh, the same, I mean, same curriculum, and uh, and then don't when they get through, they come here. Right. No, don't miss a step. Don't miss it. I mean, and that's that's true. Don't miss a step. Uh, Roy, we're about to finish up. we got about another eight minutes. Uh, but we have, uh, 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 I talked earlier about the election and, uh, we need to remind the voters, uh, early voting, uh, November the 22nd through November the 29th, uh, for, you know, for the runoff, uh, and I. It's very important that we get out and vote. Uh, we we did a big push as far as getting out the vote here on the uh, on the primary election, but we need on this runoff. We need to really remind the people uh, our vote is very important. We don't need some outside people coming in and trying to buy this election with all the negative ads and campaigning that they did during this election. But uh, November the 22nd through November the 29th is the early voting. Yeah, this is very important to us, to our future. And it's not just very important to Union. It's very important to the working men and women of Louisiana. And, uh, you know, and I just cannot stress enough how important this election is that's coming up. Uh, yeah, when it comes to politics, there is no union, non-union. It's working people, uh, you know, I hate to say again, but it's working people are a big business. Yeah, and... Uh, you know, and we, we really need to, uh, you know, we need to voice our, uh, have our voice heard, and how we have our voice heard is in the voting booths. That's right. It's, it's, not, it's not a privilege, it's your duty. Yes, it, it really is. And, uh, you know, and uh, I think we're going to get out uh, and have a big push and, and try to get uh, people to realize how important their vote is, really is. And... Uh, is there anything else we can cover as far as uh, the school? We'll, we'll give out the, the number one more time as far as if they want to join uh, Local 198's apprenticeship school. Uh, and it's 225-355-9938. Oh, and uh, Roy, uh, we did miss one person, the person that's going to be answering that phone call uh, to give to you. Oh, Stephanie. Yes. Stephanie Jones, she's a... Uh, She's my life preserver. Yes. Uh, Stephanie is, uh, she's very diligent in, in her job back there. Uh, I think y'all are in the process of doing a, a, a website right now. A what? A website. Yes. We, it's, it's all, but it's not complete. Yeah. We, so you do have it up and uh, running? Yes. Uh, if I want to skate around on it, what do I do? Uh. Local 198 Apprenticeship School. Okay. www.local198apprenticeshipschool.org, I believe. Yes, dot org. Okay. And, uh, we don't have a lot on it just yet, but we're adding a little here and there. And, and she, know, just, she just started on that, what, a week ago? Or two yeah, weeks about ago? a week and a half or so. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, but you're going to have, uh, from what I hear from her, you're going to have it where, uh, you can get your application online and be able to do a lot of uh, stuff. Have uh, be prepared when you come up there and have all your stuff ready. And uh, right, all the requirements are on there. And uh, there, there'll be a, a link where you can just click to go to the state plumbing board or the United Association website and uh, several more. Um, well, and at one time we had uh, we had, we mentioned on the uh, earlier on the show when you first called in as far as having a GED or a high school diploma, uh, we did have a dual enrollment back there at one time, and I think we're going to look at trying to do that again. And the dual enrollment is where we're going to try to help these young men and women that don't have a high school diploma or GED uh, be able to get the uh, the GED and. Uh, and still, you know, work them into the apprenticeship school, uh, you know, once they complete their GED program back there. Yeah, and, and the dual enrollment, you just uh, reminded me of something. All of our students here, are they're not really dual enrolled, they're triple enrolled. 
they get a credit here, and they're also a student of DRCC because we're partnered with them. So every class they complete here, they get a credit at DRCC and also Washington Hall Community College and, and, in Ann Arbor, Michigan. And let's, let's, let's talk about that real quick. Uh, so they're, they're getting credits for that so they can, and I, and I just remembered this, and I should have uh, said this earlier, but uh, they can get us an associate's degree uh, through our apprenticeship school, can't they? Or well, yeah, well, there's about four, four, give or take, four or five classes they have to take after they, when they finish their apprenticeship school, and they will have a, an associate's degree. And okay. out of Washington All College, that's the UA University, and uh, you can do the, all of that online. And and it's a uh, yeah, and you can do it all online, and and like I said, you can further your uh, you can further your education uh, with that, and have you know, and have an associate's degree uh, in construction management. I forget what the other uh, the other ones are, but uh, you know, you can. You have some choices. Yeah, you you've got choices that you can uh, you can get in, and and like I said, get an associate's degree uh, and still earn a living while you're doing all that. I know we're about out of time. There's one other thing as far as the continuing education. All of our instructors are required to go to Ann Arbor, Michigan for a week of training every summer. So our instructors are continually being trained too. And our instructors are required to go for five years and graduate uh, to be an instructor back at our school. Right. Then they're, yeah. we, we had one graduate last year and one graduate the year before that. Lane Ballard graduated last year and... Uh, Gary Adams graduated the year before that. Okay. Well, Roy, we're running out of time. I appreciate you calling in. Roy McGraw, uh, area code 225-355-9938. If you're interested in uh, becoming uh, associated with a local union 198 apprenticeship school, this is the uh, AFL-CIO Baton Rouge Labor Radio. We're on WTQT 106.1 FM. And we appreciate y'all listening. Thank y'all for uh, listening. Thank you, Roy. Thank you.